Good morning to all. Uh, wherever you are, it might be morning, afternoon, or evening. But uh, before we pray, I would just like to remind you that we want to uh, take communion today. And so if, if you need to uh, go and get some uh, wine and uh, bread, uh, that would be a good thing to do now so that you can participate with everyone uh, as we do it together a little later in the service. Uh, I'm sure you won't have time to bake some unleavened bread uh, or anything else, but uh, whatever you would normally use for communion, if you don't have that to hand uh, at, at this point, I would uh, encourage you to go ahead and do that. Uh, let's pray. Father, as we start out on this first day of this new year, we pray that the Holy Spirit would come to each of us on this day, in this time, and speak to all of us, individually and as families and together, that we might fulfill your purposes, we might bring praise to your name, and we might step into this place of new beginnings with a grace, Lord, that is brand new and that takes us forward. Thank you for being our helper, Lord, as we speak as we listen and cause your will to be done in a wonderful, marvelous, miraculous way. We pray these things in Jesus' most precious and powerful name. Amen. Now, I know some of you may be uh, wondering why I'm wearing a hat, uh, especially here in the Kenton Cathedral. Uh, but uh, I will explain that later. We will we'll come to that. And, you know, as, as I was seeking the Lord about what to share on this first day of, of the new year, uh, I just had come into my spirit uh, exit. And, you know, often God will speak to me uh, through a particular book. And, and so I'll, I'll have this seed and I'll, I'll go to a book and begin reading through that book. And so many things will come to me uh, kind of prophetically as well as you know, just in general uh, knowledge and insight about the scriptures. And I sensed God directing me to the book of Exodus. And so I'd like to frame the message today uh, for 2023 as a year of exits and new beginnings. Uh, exits are extremely important. If you don't have an exit, you can't have a new beginning. And what God has put in my spirit for us uh, is that 2023 will be a year of exits. And so what better place to start than a book that uh, gives exit strategies uh, and to see what the Holy Spirit might speak to each of us personally in our family and as a congregation regarding exits, because exits are so important. Uh, as, I, as I said, you can't have a new beginning if you don't have an exit. And we understand from the book of Exodus how important uh, exits are. If you want to uh, research beginnings, uh, study the book of Genesis, because that's the book of beginnings. If uh, you want to uh, understand what principles you should live by, uh, read the book of Leviticus and allow the Holy Spirit. And, and all the way through the Bible, you will find uh, a great treasure trove of insight based on a particular book. And so God directed me to the book of Exodus. And as, as I was reading, I felt uh, impressed to share certain things with you concerning 2023. And for us to name specifically what we will personally, perhaps as a family and as a congregation, will be leaving in 2023. And uh, Exodus... Uh, 12 through 14, which we'll be focusing on, uh, is really uh, a powerful passage of exit strategy and insight. And this today is more of a prophetic message. It's, it's not so much of a teaching about the book of Exodus, but it is more of uh, what I would say a word from the Lord from the word. Uh, and I'm sure you have found that God often gives you a personal rhema type word from the eternal written word of God. 
And so that's what today's message is uh, as we look at 2023, a year of exits and new beginnings. And so as we start this, this new year, we want to get ready to leave some things. And you have to leave in order to make a new beginning. And, you know, somebody might say, but Pastor, that's not rocket science. Uh, you have to leave in order to make a new beginning. However, it becomes rocket science to anybody who is mired in the long established patterns and habits uh, of life, whether they're good or bad. Uh, you can get so stuck that you may desire a new beginning, but if you do not make a decision, about leaving, you won't make a new beginning. And so there's a whole book of the Bible and, and many other passages, but especially the book of Exodus, because it talks continually about Israel, God's people, leaving, 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 and the strategies and the processes involved. And we, we understand that our life journey is a continual journey of leaving someplace and going someplace. And it's based upon a covenant that we have with the Lord. Uh, the father of faith, uh, Abraham, had a covenant, and that covenant was first instructed to him. As God told him in Genesis chapter 12, I want you to leave where you are. In other words, make an exit from where you are and go to a place I'm going to take you. And then the Bible says in verse 4 of Genesis 12, so Abram left. That can't be written about you or me unless we make a decision to leave where we have been. It is so important to understand about exits. Uh, I often speak with people who are discouraged uh, who, who have more faith invested in staying in some place they do not want to be rather than in God's grace to take them. But God has established a covenant with us and he grants us grace to leave and grace to make a new beginning. And Exodus chapter 14 and verse 12, uh, we understand this sort of contradictory uh, nature that we have. Israel was all excited to leave, and uh, they weren't terribly excited at first, but after uh, 10 plagues, they said, yeah, let, let's, let's leave. <laughs> and so they, they, they were leaving, and they got out, and they got to another location, and they got to the Red Sea, and then you, you can hear their, their inner attitude in Exodus 14 to verse 12, when they were upset with Moses for taking him to the Red Sea, when it looked like they were going to be wiped out by the Egyptians. So didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. In other words, basically they're saying, Moses, we should never have left. And often God's people have this kind of feeling that if they experience some difficulty, down the road that they shouldn't have left where they were, even though they hated where they were, even though they had a sense that God didn't want them living in that condition, that situation, that relationship, whatever it was, any longer. And so we, we understand this characteristic, but that's why it's so important for us to have insight and take steps concerning our exit. And the covenant established exits that God has planned for all of us. And we'll, we'll go into this in a, in a practical way. But uh, I just like you to, to grasp uh, in one small way how much the Bible actually emphasizes exits. You may not be aware, but 143 times in the Bible, from the Old Testament through the New Testament, the Bible uses this phrase, out of Egypt, out of Egypt, out of Egypt, out of Egypt. However you define Egypt, God says, I want you to understand, 
Egypt is not a place where you belong. You may have gone a, to a certain location and been there for a while, but when God says it's time to go, that place becomes Egypt. That place becomes bondage. That place becomes incredibly wearisome. And the fulfillment and the grace drift away and you are stuck. And until you make a decision that you are going to make an exit, you don't make a new beginning. And yet, because God loves us and he's made this covenant with us, he says, I have grace, I have help, I have ability, I have power to enable you to leave. And he wanted to persuade a company of people that believed very much that they were stuck for the rest of their days in Egypt. He used 10 plagues to show them how powerful he was and also to prepare them to leave. You know, sometimes God uses the uncomfortability of our setting to make us ready for something better. And I am sure that if you're listening today, you are in circumstances and settings and situations that you you uh, perhaps wish were better. <laughs> and you believe that God's promises speak of something better. And so there is inside of you this, this desire and this instinct and this longing to go for something better. And that's something God put in you. If God put it in you, then you shouldn't damp it out and, and stamp it out and, and try to uh, suppress it. You should say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. And the book of Exodus, uh, and especially in chapter 12, uh, God speaks to uh, Moses and Aaron. And I'd like to just look at a few verses here. Because as I was reading this, it really kind of struck me some of the parallels between where we are as a congregation and and myself and perhaps your family and and uh, others that you know uh, that are found in this passage. And we're we're going to uh, focus on uh, these two chapters, Genesis twelve through, or rather Exodus twelve through fourteen, over the next little while. So the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, "This month." is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Well, this first day of 2023 is the first month and the first day of our new year. Okay, it's, it's not according to the Hebrew. I get that. I'm not teaching about the book of Exodus from a Hebrew point of view. I'm talking about the word of the Lord for us today. This is how God spoke to me concerning 2023. This month is to be for you the first month the first month of your year. So God gives them some instructions. And then he says, tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb. The, the instruction of the Lord was that everyone who was a part of the community of Israel was to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. They were to take this lamb and sacrifice it. And he says, for their family, for their family. Sacrifice a lamb for your family. Sacrifice a lamb for your family. There is a lamb for the family. There's a lamb for me. There's a lamb that is for my wife and my children and my grandchildren and my wider family. I want to just camp here for a moment. Take the lamb for your family. And then he, he goes on, he says, for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they may share one with their neighbor's nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. And he says, you very practical. You already determined the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. So he's, there's always more than enough of the lamb when you get ready to take the lamb for yourself and your family. And so he said, I want this communion, this participation in the sacrifice of the lamb to be for the entire community of God's people. And, you know, really this is uh, 
a story of our lives is that we always come back to the sacrificial lamb of Christ in every part of our journey. It's, it's what took place in the sacrificial lamb and his life and death and resurrection that enable us to continue the progression of our lives, no matter how sane or how stuck or how difficult or how wearisome, uh, how tragic, how problematical it seems, how we seem to be addicted to the same. The lamb is still available to enable us to make progress. Now, I want you to grasp something here in the context of this great story. They had 10 plagues and Pharaoh still said no. <laughs> no, no, you're not leaving. And so here's another instruction. And so to carry on, he says, the animals you must choose must be year old males without defect. You may take them from the sheep or the goats, take care of them. When all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. So these were specific instructions. God says, if you're going to go where I intend you to go, follow these instructions. You might say, you know, if you were an Israelite, you might say, well, why do we have to wait until twilight? Why can't we have it before? If it's ready before, why not have it before or have it later? Argue with God or go with God. If you go with God, you will make the exit that God intends you to make. Then, interestingly, he says, then they are to take some of the blood. If you sacrifice a lamb, there's going to be blood. You slaughter a lamb, it's going to be blood. And put it on the sides and the tops of the door frames of the houses where you eat, where you live. In other words, they were to make the sign of the cross with blood. Blood on the top, blood on the two sides of the doorposts. That was a symbol of the sign of the cross, the, the blood sacrifice. That same night, they're to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roasted over the fire. Do not leave any of it till morning. You know, I, I'll resist the temptation to stop on each one of these phrases, but they're all so full of awesome insights about our relationship to the Lamb of God. But I want to focus here on verse 11. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So what's God saying here to you, uh, to us? He says, when you're ready to leave, he said, orient yourself towards the exit. And these are my instructions, my exit instructions. And you're going to have this meal. You're going to sacrifice the lamb and put some blood on the doorposts and remind yourself it's it's the life is in the blood and there's a shedding of blood that is going to take you out of where you have been. Then he says, very practically, I want you to get ready to go. Get ready to go with making a meal. Get ready to go in your head. In every way you can, prepare yourself for an exit. So he says, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. In other words, you're, you're getting ready to go out. And that's why I'm wearing a hat today. In fact, when we have our Feast of Celebration, I've, I want to encourage every single person to wear a hat to that meal. And because that's a sign that we are leaving some very, very significant things that we want to leave in 2023. This is what God told Israel. He said, I want you, I want to put your sandals on your feet and your cloak tucked into your belt and, and heat it. And just, you know, you're he's orienting them mentally, physically, in every way, the meal, uh, the timing, everything, inside and outside. And you might have said, well, look, you know, I don't need to put my sandals on or, or uh, have my cloak tucked in and my staff ready in my hand like I was getting. No, I don't need to do that. Okay, I'll, I'll kill it. No. Many people have a desire for change. They want to leave where they are in some location, some setting, some circumstance, some relationship, some habit, some condition. They, they want to leave that. They, they, they instinctively know that 
that God does not want them living there any longer. And if you're going to leave, you have to orient yourself totally toward leaving. And, and that's why this was such a step of faith, because Pharaoh hadn't really given many permission yet. And yet God says, I want you to do this as though you are leaving, because you are leaving. Agree with God and say, I'm leaving X, Y, and Z. And, and we'll uh, give you opportunity to identify those things that you believe God is speaking to you that need to be left for you to make new beginnings in a whole number of areas. And then he goes on, he says, At the same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. All the gods of Egypt. Israel had been slaves to the gods of Egypt. Not so much that they were worshiping the gods of Egypt, though they were at times, uh, but the oppression of the Egyptian system had weighed upon them. And God says, I'm going to take you out of that kind of oppression. No longer. He says, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I'll pass over you, and no destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. So in our understanding of exits, God wants to take us out of a place of oppression and bring judgment upon that which has held us back, satanic as it is. I'm not talking about people. Uh, I'm talking about spiritual conditions and demons, uh, uh, circumstances that have been uh, seemingly locked in place in your life, God says, I'm going to bring a judgment on that and you're going to be free. You're going to be free. I intend you to progress with no destruction touching you because I'm going to come upon that which has held you back. And, and he, he goes on to say how important this is. This isn't just a, a small event. It's, it's recorded for all of time uh, and the rest of eternity. He said, this is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You'll celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. And so a lasting ordinance. It's, it's, it's to be carried out through all the generations. And we know when we partake of communion today, we're, we're taking uh, part in that new covenant picture of this Old Testament institution of the Passover lamb sacrificed for us. And so your inner and your outer life are oriented together to leaving certain things in 2023. What are you leaving? Well, first of all, let's look at the Egyptian system. In Genesis chapter 12 and verse 41, it says, At the end of the 430 years to the very day, all the divisions the Lord's divisions, left Egypt. Because the Lord kept vigil that night to bring them out of Egypt. On this night, all the Israelites are to keep vigil for the generations to come. And Exodus 13 and verse 3 says, And Moses said to the people, Commemorate this day, the day you came out of Egypt, the land, out of the land of slavery out of the land of slavery, because the Lord brought you out of it with a mighty hand. You know, you get to a point in your Christian journey where you soon come to realize that if you're going to make an exit out of what seems to be the mire and the quicksand and uh, unchangeable circumstances, it's going to have to come by the mighty hand of God. And it's a wonderful thing to know that God says, I want to do the miraculous in your exit. And I am prepared to do that if you have decided that you are ready to go and you'll do what I tell you in terms of instruction. And so this whole Egyptian system, this slavery, and, you know, their, their slavery was had many different aspects to it. They were in poverty. They were homeless. They were oppressed. They had sickness and tyranny and all kinds of things. And, and I'm just talking about the historical, but 
you can fill in the blanks yourself for your own self and your own family, your own physical body, your own finances, your own housing situation, whatever it is. God says in 2023, I want to take you out of that place and show you what I can do with my mighty hand. I want to deliver you from that and commemorate this. So today we want to make an application of this message as we look at this year of exits and new beginnings. And we want to take communion this morning as a reminder that the one who brought us out of our own personal Egypt, the very reason that we know Christ as our Savior today, was that God had to take us out of the slavery we had to sin and the sinful nature. And so we're going to take communion today. And so I'd encourage you to get the emblems ready uh, now as, as we would start this new year by saying to the Lord, Lord, we are remembering the Passover. We're remembering the sacrificial lamb that died so that the blood could be applied to us. We would come out of slavery to sin and the poverty and sickness and death and discouragement and failure and you know the sameness of, of staying in a place longer than we should. Uh, Lord, the sacrificial lamb is the one that takes us out of all of that. And we want to celebrate you. We want to celebrate you and what you've done, even as you did with these people long ago. And you told them to get ready, get ready. Don't just desire a change, but get ready, get ready. And as we start 2023, say in your heart, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready, Pastor. I'm ready to leave X, Y, and Z. And, and over the next a couple of weeks, you'll be able to hear the Holy Spirit say, yes, I want you to leave that. I want you to leave that and leave that. And you don't have to answer all the questions. People, sometimes people say, well, yeah, but if I leave that, then what? I might end up like Israel and, and by, by be like the Red Sea and wish I'd gone back. You know, don't be foolish. It's, that's why it's in the Bible. God wants to take you out so he can take you in. And he always takes you from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from where you are to a better place. Oh, you may have challenges, but there's grace to go. There's grace to, to live at, at a new level where God takes us. And we want to partake of that grace today as we share communion together. And so as, as, as you hold the bread today and you consider what Christ did to take you out of Egypt, as we hold the bread, the symbol of Christ's broken body, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, the lamb that was broken for me, the lamb that I partake of today and that I partake of for my family, for my children and my grandchildren and my wider family and for the family of God. This is a community thing. It's a community thing. There's a grace released when we take communion together. And as we hold the bread today, we say, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you allowed the sacrifice of your son so that we might have your life. We might have your freedom, your blessing, your progression, and every one of your covenantal promises because your body was broken for us. And thank you, Lord, for the shedding of your blood that washed away our sins and cleansed us and gave us a new life gave us a participation, a fellowship, a communion with you that we could not have unless the blood was applied to the door of our hearts through our confession of faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord. We bless this bread today, broken for us, that gave us an exit from the kingdom of darkness and an entrance to the kingdom of light. We bless this bread today that it might be life in us in a new way in 2023. In Jesus' name.
Shall we eat together? And Father, we take this cup representing the eternal blood of Christ that was poured out upon the altar of heaven when Christ arose. In our behalf, His blood was shed so that we might live eternally in relationship with You. For you said, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. It was sin that kept us in Egypt. Today, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We have a birth certificate that is stamped with the blood of Christ. That has washed away our sins. Enabled us to walk in a wonderful relationship with you. Thank you for new days and new beginnings as we begin this year of exits. Bless this cup to our spirit, our mind, our body, our health, our family, our ministry, our congregation, all those things that matter in Jesus' most precious and powerful name. Shall we partake together? As we carry forward this message from the Lord, we want to start this new year with what God had said to Israel. I want you to take this and make it a seven-day celebration. And so we're going to spend seven days of, of fasting and prayer beginning on the 9th, and, which is a Monday, and passing through the 15th. And during that period of time, I want to encourage you to uh, spend time in prayer every day and while you are fasting and allow yourself to read through Exodus chapter 12 through 14 and say, Lord, speak to me about the exits that are supposed to happen in my life. And, you know, maybe it's an exit from joblessness or carlessness or homelessness or whatever it might be. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And then each evening at 7.30, we will have a Zoom together where you have a chance in a small group not only to agree with others who are making exits of all kinds, but for them to agree with you as you share what God has spoken to you from Exodus 12 through 14. And then on the uh, 16th, which is a Monday, we will have a celebration meal. We'll give you some more details of that. But it will be a day of feasting. As God said, I want this to be also a festival. And there's, there's a meal involved. There's a place of great rejoicing and celebration that you're, you're making this monumental, God-enabled, powerful exit. And so uh, when we celebrate that meal, I want to encourage each one of you to do as I am doing today, to come with food, and we'll give you the details, and a hat. And if you have an infant, put a hat on the infant. And it's, it's our message to each other and our, and our message to ourselves and a message to the devil uh, that we're leaving. We're leaving. Because we know that a new beginning is our, is our portion. We have to leave in order to make a new beginning. And if we will choose to leave and believe, we will make that new beginning. In regard to the fasting, it's a water-only fast, unless you're unable to do a water-only fast. If you're unable to do a water-only fast for medical reasons or you're in heavy uh, type of physical work, uh, or whatever the reason might be, eat very lightly, but spend time in prayer and seeking the Lord and allowing the Lord to speak into your heart and, and do those things that enable you to be fully ready to leave those places where He wants you and, and I to leave. And we'll gather uh, each evening at 7.30 and we will gather on uh, 
the 16th for a great celebration meal. And uh, we'll, we'll have an awesome time. 2023 is going to be a year of great rejoicing. And you're going to say, I'm, I'm so glad I had made up my mind to cooperate and agree with heaven that I am leaving X, Y, and Z, and that I am headed into a brand new grace for living, a brand new day of favor and opportunity to the praise and honor and the glory of the Lord not only individually, but for us as a congregation. Let's pray. Father, thank you for each one of us that has heard the message today. Lord, go well beyond anything I've said and speak wonderfully, powerfully, personally, specifically into the hearts of each one as we seek the Lord in these coming days. As we set out from this year to leave places that we were never meant to stay any longer, Thank you for that grace to leave. We will not be stuck any longer. We'll not be mired any longer. We will not be looking back any longer. We'll not be looking down any longer. Lord, we will be saying, yes, Lord, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. And we will be anticipating the work of your mighty hand that brings judgment upon everything that has stood in our way. In Jesus' most precious and wonderful name, amen. God bless you.